really easy to understand, um, and we like that. We, we also thought in terms of implementation that um, giving timely and effective feedback, higher quality feedback, is becoming more the norm in our schools. We thought that, we, we like to see that. And we also felt that cumulative grading uh, is being used more than it has been at, by the end of the semester. In terms of weaknesses, this is a little bit of a repeat uh, from something the last group said, so I think that's noteworthy, that we noticed in the document itself there really isn't a lot of discussion or, or work on um, the, um, uh, the more, some of the engagement pieces in terms of um, how the students feel about the school. There, there really isn't a lot of mention about that in the document. Things like, uh, and some ideas that we came up with is uh, things like newsletters, social media, using Blackboard, uh, using Google Docs amongst the faculty. Um, and so those pieces seem to be, seem to be missing. Um, in terms of implementation, student-led conferences are still uh, not the norm at the high school level. And we also noted that many parents lack the information or the skill to access a lot of the data that we have for them. Um, and yet that's not really something that's addressed well in the document either and not in, in practice in our buildings. In, in terms of opportunities, we felt like we have a, a lot of, we're, we're right on the cusp of really, really doing some great work with culturally responsive practices and increasing student and family engagement. Again, that seems to be a, a, a recurring theme carrying over from the last group uh, that talked. And um, when we talk about threats, um, one of the things that we felt is a threat is that uh, our system seems to perpetuate a culture that schools are the only ones responsible for proactively monitoring student progress. And while certainly we, that is a very important function of schools, we need to change the culture of parents need to also have some, uh, feel some urgency to stay informed of what's going on with their students and using the tools that we provide. And if we continue to perpetuate a culture where if you don't get it from us, uh, that you know we're the only ones responsible to provide information, that's dangerous, we think. So that's why we identified that as a threat. Um, moving on to practice, some, some examples of how different elements of the um, document are being implemented. Uh, these are just highlights, taking, taking a specific piece and then showing an example. Um, one example is trend grading. EHEV Academy is uh, really kind of leading the way in terms of trend grading in the district. And here's one of our EHEV teachers explaining how it works in EHEV. This is a quick look at how trend grading is done at EHEV Academy. Trend grading is a process of reporting the true achievement of a student for an educational learning target. The final score for that target is determined by the instructor and not electronically calculated. Here are four assessment scores for a target. You can see the student showed advanced mastery by the fourth assessment. We would trend this as a four since the student ultimately demonstrated that mastery. Of course, in reality, more assessments are needed to show whether the mastery level is maintained. In these examples, you can see how the instructor has trended the scores for this target and the rationale for those trend scores. It must be emphasized that it is the professional judgment of the instructor that determines the trend of the scores. So, oh, I should have paused on that last slide. Let me see if I can get back. So these are just these are just some scenarios, and, and one of the things we've been working on at eAchieve is it, it, the last couple of faculty meetings we've been throwing up a couple of scenarios and just doing some calibration activities in terms of if this if this was a target 
and these were the assessments along the semester and, and, and the, 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 the score that the student earned on each of those assessments, what would you give the student as a final grade for that target at the end of the semester? So we've been doing these calibration activities. Um, the middle one there that's 444s four, four, and then incompletes at the end ends up as an incomplete because we just don't have enough, there wasn't consistent evidence at the end. We don't know if things progressively got more difficult. We, we couldn't uh, determine a score. <coughs> the second from the bottom one there um, actually showed a decline in the skills as the, as the semester progressed and that's what we would report at the end. The last one showed um, fairly good mastery but it wasn't consistent in terms of fours all the way across so in the end they would be assigned a three because there wasn't a consistent advanced demonstration of, of skills. All right. I'm done. Who's next? Tom. Okay. Okay. This, this, I hope this isn't too um, uh, elementary for us, but what I put together was how I have my grade book set up in a fine arts class to demonstrate how standard score has been used for timely feedback, at least in, in uh, what I've been doing here. Today we're going to talk about assessment. Before I go on, let's see if I make it bigger. And this originally was seven minutes long, and I was told that was too long, so this is the edited version. So every now and then you'll see fast forward. <laughs> but um, I think that that original video would be valuable to new staff, and we're going to try and make it available to them. Today we're going to talk about assessment and choir these days. It's no longer good just to show up, behave, and get an A in class. We're grading to standards, benchmarks, and learning targets. I'd like to show you how we give students feedback in our classes. Right? We'll start here with this student named Rachel Aja. And um, I'm going to say that I listened to her. Uh, we had recordings. We had uh, try to give a singing tests. And I walk around the room. I have uh, oral assessment on my own that I can do by observation. And I know that she's singing real well in tune. And she has a great she got two fours this week. All right, let's just take this student for example. Well, I hear that when she sings high, she sings a little flat or a little pitch, but she has a great sound. So we have that kind of grade this week for her in quiet. And I can put a comment in that says, when singing high, a little flat. That's, that's the part that's the, the timely feedback. Um, what I, I'll let it talk. And I've actually had kids come in the next day after they see that grade and they go, really, I've seen a little flat? And I'm like, yes, and we discuss ways to uh, fix that um, intonation problem. And it leads to a good dialogue between myself and the student giving them feedback. And I can quickly go down the class Say this kid was just really, really out of tune, and this is all being read, by the way. So it's not a confidentiality issue. <laughs> and I can go through and continue to make comments if I need to, or and continue to grade to the learning target. Now, we're going to look at the other side. So you can see what it looks like for kids. I'm going to put a little comment. Yeah, it says your dad is cool. Yeah. Um, this I thought would be interesting because very few of us get to see what it looks like from the student view. And so since I have a couple of kids at West, I thought that um, I'd share that with you and what they see and how we have to train them to use what a uh, web grader in there for lunch. I'm going to log in with her. Oh, 
doing good. <laughs> no, sorry, English people. Getting some nice grants in the class. Passing grants required. And in the beginning of the year, I teach kids how to use Web Creator's interface so that they can get the most out of their feedback. That's key. I can't say that enough. We really have to teach them how to use Web Creator at the secondary level. Because a lot of times, like for example, my daughter will just pull up this screen and go, oh, doing fine, good, gone. And you have, and at least as long as we're still using Web Grader, we have to um, dig a little deeper. Now, in two places he has to look in Web Grader. In technical skill, or in um, standards report, she can see that we, for week seven rehearsal, under the learning target of intonation, she received a four. And week seven, uh, uh, tone quality, she received a four. Here's one of those uh, kind of putsy things about WebGrader. If we want to see the comments, we have to go to detail. And we can see her very nice right here. Okay? And that's where the kids would see the comment about, you know, maybe they or something, or something very particular to them. And it's just a nice way to give feedback. That's pretty much where But um, I know that with uh, several of our, um, I guess I'd go with mostly from that um, clicker response we did. I think we're pretty much at B right now, where the majority of the staff, I mean, in, at least in the music department, I'm pretty sure, is um, that the secondary is grading in the same. And then for this next piece, it has to do with uh, competency diplomas. Um, yeah, exactly. And then um, next slide. One more. Um, through the competency diploma and <laughs> through working with uh, local businesses and people who are hiring students with the employability piece of it, with focusing in general on collaboration and communication. So our teachers are constantly within small groups giving a lot of verbal feedback on specific targeted skills so they can move on. So I just have two little pieces here. To demonstrate employability skills such as teamwork, collaboration, creativity, and problem solving, students were given 15 minutes, newspaper, and masking tape to create a shelter that their team can fit in all without talking to each other. The competency program is a program for severely credit deficient high school seniors. Um, they need to pro prove that they have mastered the competencies that are required by the state of Wisconsin for all high school seniors. In the pro program, we have a lot of flexibility in how we can go about having them provide that information to us. Uh, we can accommodate a lot of different learning styles, a lot of different content areas um, and incorporate many different evaluation tools uh, to determine exactly what the mastery level is. They can do it in written form, they can do it verbally, they can do it as a presentation to the class. It really is up to them to choose uh, how they're going to demonstrate the mastery of the topic that was covered in the class. A lot of flexibility, but a lot of personalization. So through that process, there's constant feedback with the student and where they are. Um, in their long-range plan for the year so they can continue to demonstrate proficiency in each of the areas with the teacher. And at this time, I'd like my elementary friends to join me so they can continue. In the discussions and data collection that we participated in with our colleagues, um, talking about feedback was something people could do pretty well. Um, we have a couple um, slides that I'll show you and then we'll talk. Thank you, Johnny Jacob. Okay, here's the treat. Here's a little lady making her second appearance on the Gong Show, all the way from London, England. Your favorite and hers, <laughs> Becky McGinnis. On the good ship, the dark, the 
Now, what would have happened if she got a little feedback? <laughs> Quantifying feedback. When we dis discuss feedback with our colleagues, yes, I give feedback. Yeah, I give it right away. I give it so the kids can change their performance. I give it so the kids learn from the feedback. But I think something that the vision of excellence doesn't have is some descriptors of terms like feedback or uh, quantifying characteristics um, to see um, what's good feedback. Sure, you could say you do it. Yes, we meet the vision of excellence goal, but do we do it appropriately? Do we do it timely enough? Do we do it? Um, when it's most needed. This is Sorry. <laughs> and we are missing the heavy knives. Oh, well, that's okay. okay. That will just continue with the body of the slide. According to collected research from multiple subjects, the investigative team reviewed numer numerous sources of data, which was compiled <coughs> using the Gray's anatomy technique. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, Susan, the sample. Can you some feedback? We're kind of noticing with the other videos that they're really smiling and not seeing a lot of smiley faces. <laughs> 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 Do you think maybe you could include some videos and get those mouse dynamics? I appreciate the feedback, <laughs> the immediate feedback, thank you very much. And I plan to make some changes for my next presentation, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Jamie, and coincidentally, I have a video. <laughs> so um, we surveyed the elementary schools and with uh, the 12 schools that responded, we asked them the question, does your school have student-led conferences? And these were the results that we got. Um, we are going to be sending out, we have a few hard copies of the handout, and we'll be sending out the data piece of this that's sort of boring to present, but um, that needs to be known and looked at. So you can see that we do have um, quite a few schools are doing student-led conferences, but we still have a ways to go. And we have an example of one. This is from some of you with a first grader. Um, there's a student and there's his mother. This was a little contrived. This is not our normal conference time, so it looks a little more scripted than it normally would, but um, it's a good example. I want to share, to share with you some of my lesson tissue notes. The words I didn't do in science experience and a map I made of my bedroom. My college will end with writing a goal for me to work until the end of the year. I wish I want to tell you what I learned about shapes. This shape, this triangle is not a triangle because it's not closed. And this square, this square because it is closed and the defining attributes are... <laughs>
hardest part was deciding where to cut that clip because <laughs> the defining attributes part, there was stuff like that all the way through it. <laughs> Nobody wanted to cut it. Um, the next step we have um, student goal setting. And if, if we want our kids to get to a place where they're setting their own goals and driving their own learning, we really need to give them lots of opportunities for goal setting. And in that same survey that Terry was talking about, we asked them, does your school do student goal setting? And we probably could have been a, a little more specific in getting, you know, what kind of goal setting we were talking about because I think we do all kinds of things from looking at map data and only setting it when we do our map testing and or doing it by the unit or setting goals by target. There's all kinds of goal setting going on. But what we found was 50% of the schools, um, the elementary schools that replied back said that between 51 and 100% of their classrooms participate in goal setting. And you can see the other data there. And this is Another video where we had, we wanted to show you some students doing goal setting. The first is a fourth grade classroom. And they're actually, they were looking at the report card and they're taking the grades on the report card and they're doing goal setting with this sheet. And then that moves, it moves into another clip that is a second grade classroom. And this second grade classroom starts their reader's workshop every day. Part of their routine is they go get their literacy bins and inside their, their reader's notebooks there's a little um, pocket in the front where they pull out their goal, whatever their current goal is. So part of their routine is they grab their bins. So you're going to see a lot of activity. They grab their bins, they go to their spots, and they take out their goal and they whisper it to themselves. Some days they whisper it to a partner and the teacher asks four or five kids aloud What's your reading goal for today? So that's what you'll see, and it's just very short. Oh, you guys didn't need to do that. <laughs> right Sorry, on. Up here, up here. <laughs> Are you always showing your high level score? What do you think? The two steps. Yeah, sometimes, 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 and sometimes not. That's exactly what the two basic needs. So if we take a look at your goal sheet, here's a, a spot for your name. I would like you to set a goal for the second trimester. Here's the back. Series book. Every day. That's an excellent goal. What's yours, Bryce? I don't read me. Are you reading putting bad? Use pictures and figure out words. And before the last slide, we like to say that today we highlighted um, student goal setting and student led conferences. We have other details uh, regarding communication, feedback, and reporting. We decided not to put you through eight or nine more slides. See, I can learn Jane Portrait. <laughs> and instead, we'll provide this in a handout, a hard copy format if you prefer, and we'll share a copy of this um, with Google Drive. I want you to uh, enjoy this for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can see from uh, how important the right kind of feedback and communication is because that is not us <laughs> as educators. And in closing, as you saw from the Gong Show and from other ways of doing it, we as educators have a very important job and that is to give the feedback that is immediate and positive but yet honest to all of our students, and that job certainly is being done uh, well in Waukesha. So thank you.